Hi everyone, um, I'm Philip, and uh, my summer project was about the question how we can make NLP pipelines more private. And so, um, yeah, just to give you a starting idea, imagine you're a researcher and um, you are interviewing people and you want to find out whether they own a specific attribute. So that, for example, could be you want to find out whether they have committed tax evasion. And although you're not the police or law enforcement, people might just not be honest with you because they don't want to, uh, because they are yeah, concerned that their privacy is um, uh, yeah, like, uh, revealed. And basically what, what you can do then is you can introduce noise into this process. So in this example, you can give your uh, participants a coin and they toss the coin once and that determines whether they tell the truth or not. And then you toss, they toss the coin again and that second coin toss determines um, yeah, yes or no, what, and their answer, they respond to you. So this way, only 50% of your participants actually tell you the truth, but, um, and everyone thus achieves plausible deniability because everyone can say, no, like the time cost was uh, that I had to yet yeah, tell, uh, don't tell the truth. So everyone has plausible deniability about the answer, but it's still possible to get aggregated results. And that's normally what you're interested in, especially in machine learning. So what is, what is the problem in ML? Um, and there a similar question can be asked and that is, uh, was a specific example or data point used during training? And you can imagine that might be of interest if there's perhaps a cancer study and people participating in the study don't want that their data is revealed or that you can um, yeah, um, make out individual people that participated in the study. Um, so one attack, how you can actually find out whether a training example was part of training or not, is called membership inference attack or short MIR. And uh, they were introduced in 2017 by Shokri et al. And they basically abused the fact that models overfit. So what they what they did is they train an attack model that's basically a, a binary classifier that can determine whether a data point was part of the training set or not. And um, they can determine that because uh, the model responses are different to seen data than to unseen data. And they showed that this can even work in a black box setting where they trained uh, that only access to the models prediction, but not to the models themselves. And uh, they did this by training so-called shadow models that are metal models that learn um, the prediction, give similar predictions than the target model. And uh, they use these shadow models to train the actual attack model. And in NLP, we have uh, the specific problems that were, the choice of words can actually serve as a fingerprint. So you can identify, identify authors or individuals by just analyzing text data. And obviously this is a privacy issue. So what we can, can we do in uh, the ML scenario? And the answer is again, we can add noise to the process. And basically my project was about where in an NLP pipeline is the best place to add noise into the process. So um, yeah, in order to understand this, I want to give a quick overview how NLP pipelines traditionally worked. And the first step is normally that you have to create word embeddings because your model needs a vector as an input and not a word. So you kind of have to transform words into vectors. And the naive approach is you could just take, make a one hot vector where the length is the size of your vocabulary. But obviously these become very sparse 
uh, if your vocabulary gets large. So recently, until transformer-based models were established, uh, Glove or Virtuvec were kind of the two like um, best uh, word embeddings uh, in the state of the art. And um, in this work, I use Glove, and it's uh, Glove basically has uh, well the. It's, it's much better than one hot vectors because, first of all, the dimension is much smaller. So, for example, you can choose 100 dimensional vectors. But also the fact that two words that are similar, like, uh, say, water and river or lake, uh, fall um, close to each other in the vector space. Whereas with just like one hot vectors, they might just be all over the place in the vector space. And yeah, more recently, uh, transformer-based models uh, have been introduced, uh, such as BERT, and BERT can produce also word embeddings. And uh, the well, the advantage of BERT is really that they can provide contextualized word embeddings, which means if you have the same word, uh, for example, bank, that can have a very different meaning in different uh, contexts, BERT produces different vectors for these uh, words, whereas Glove is pre-trained on a huge corpus, and there you have for the same vector, you always, uh, for, sorry, for the same word, you always have the same vector independent of its context. So our first option is to add noise at this point to the word vectors before you start training. So these word vectors are then used for model training usually. And traditionally, like convolutional neural networks or recurrent neural networks, especially LSTMs, have performed really well in NLP tasks. And now the second option we have to add noise is during the training of these models. So what we can do here is that like, neural networks get optimized by an optimizer and uh, using gradient descent. And at the gradient descent step, we can add noise by just adding noise to the gradients. So it makes it more difficult for the models to um, yeah, update their parameters, but it also uh, makes it more difficult then for them to memorize specific training examples. And that's exactly what we uh, want to prohibit. So for example, uh, by adding noise to the gradients, we can get a differentially private version of stochastic gradient descent or differentially private version of Adam. So um, now just Remember that in membership inference attacks in a black box setting uh, only have access to the predictions of the model. So the third alternative we have, we could just actually add noise after training to the model predictions. And um, there is a specific way that has been proven to be differentially private in the mathematical sense, uh, that is PARTE, which stands for private aggregation of teacher ensembles. And here the idea is that you split up the data set into n subsets that do not overlap. And then you on each subset, you train a separate model. And they are so-called teacher models. And then um, for each data point, uh, you let the teacher model make a prediction. And then you add noise to this prediction. And then you basically let the teachers have a vote and aggregate over the teacher's result and then take this final result to train another model, uh, namely the student model, and that is then your final model. So in this case, we basically add noise to the predictions after training. So now I come to my experiment, which basically um, tests which of the three ways, uh, adding noise before training, during training, or after training, produces the best results in terms of accuracy and um, membership inference attacks. Five minutes, yeah? Five minutes. Oh, okay. um, 
So uh, I ran my tests on two data sets, which are commonly used in NLP. So the first one is a binary classification task uh, with IMDb uh, movie reviews. These are 25,000 reviews, which are labeled as positive or negative, and can be thus used for sentiment analysis. And uh, the second data set I used is the News Group 20 data set, where you have 18,000 news posts, and they are labeled by 20 topics. And so this is a multi-classification task. And um, for my models, uh, I used the CNN uh, and then LSTM. And as word embeddings, I used uh, pre-trained glove word embeddings, 100 dimensional ones, and I also used uh, bird embeddings that I trained specifically. And uh, yeah, here you can see the baseline results. I um, left out the results with the bird embeddings because although they did improve it by a bit, it took way too long to train on my machine. So th uh, there wasn't a significant um, yeah, improvement. And also it's not that relevant for basically the question where to add noise into the process. So these are the uh, base results for the IMDB data set. Um, and you can see that the training accuracy is quite similar for the LSTM and the CNN. The LSTM overfits a bit less because the test accuracy is closer to training accuracy. And um, you can the, basically how well they perform in the terms of the membership inference attack uh, are measured as the area under the rock curve. And that means that a value close to 0 0.5 means that the attacker model of the membership inference attack was not able to differentiate whether an example was in the training set or not, whereas a value closer to one means that the attacker model was more successful. So here you can see the attacker model was more successful on the CNN than on the LSTM. And that could also have to do with the fact that the CNN had a lot more free parameters than the LSTM that I used. Um, and what uh, another difference here is that I measured uh, twice. Once the uh, membership inference attack over all slices, that means um, over the categories that you use. So, um, and then one uh, that is aggregated over the entire data set. And here we have the base results for the uh, News Group 20 um, data set. And yeah, you can see the CNN is outperforming the LSTM here by a bit, um, but it also has again, um, like uh, worse, uh, it does worse on the membership inference attack. And um, yeah, this is, this is now the first result where I'm using uh, noisy word vectors. I added Laplacian noise to the word vectors. And uh, you can tell that especially the LSTM here suffers really badly from accuracy. And it, the membership inference attack improves a bit, but the trade-off here is really quite bad in terms of accuracy. And uh, this becomes even more prevalent in the multi-class classification task uh, where there's not a very significant improvement in terms of membership inference attacks and the accuracy goes really down to like just about 50 percent, whereas before we achieved like 70 or 60 percent respectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yep, yeah, you can see uh, I did the same with differentiate private atom optimizers, where I added noise to the gradients. And here you can see you really keep a good accuracy while having a decent um, membership inference attack performance. And the same is also true for the News Group 20 data set. And finally, there's the um, party mechanism where it is performed very similar to the differentially private optimizers, where you still have a good training accuracy and um, a good performance and uh, a decent improvement in terms of membership inference attacks. 
Um, so uh, my result is basically that adding noise later in the pipeline uh, tends to produce better results. And it would be interesting to further evaluate attacks with like not just membership inference attacks, but also, for example, a secret sharer attack, which is a, another kind of attack. Any questions? Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yeah, no, it's to be Okay, so because so many events are very dense, right? And I don't know what the noise you have in, but let's say the actual noise. Yeah. But have you looked at the, the embedding of that noise to see if that's actually semantically the same vector? or you might be like getting closer to other meaning in other semantics. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the question is whether the semantics changes if you add noise to the vectors. And um, indeed it does. And um, for example, I used, uh, before, I, when I just started out, I naively used not, um, like just, noise from a random uh, distribution rather than a Laplace distribution. And that takes uh, you further away from the original meaning of the vector than with the Laplacian distribution. So um, it's important which noise you add and it's correct that the meaning changes and that's why performance suffers as well. Um, the, there are also a bit more sophisticated mechanisms where you can improve this. So you make sure that um, the new vector actually maps to another embedding of a word that you had before in the vector space if you add noise or to a close word. So that should improve performance there. Um, yeah, but that's uh, yeah basically correct. So semantics change. More questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I wonder if we can learn. Uh, how to add noise by some sort of adversarial network. So just try to attack it until the, the network will not recognize it's coming from training. So it's basically that, that, that's how this dynamics model are trained. So I'm wondering if you can learn the process of adding noise by uh, the network. Yeah, so the question is whether we can make some kind of adversarial training um, and improve the word vectors or the, yeah, adding noise to the word vectors such that they are optimized for a differentially privacy task. And yeah, that's I think that's a really good idea. And that's where probably I take the project further in this direction. Um, it becomes a bit complicated because then you have kind of uh, two loss functions. You have the one of the adversary, but you're also from the membership inference attack. And then you have the one from the, um, uh, sorry, from the, so you have the one from the membership inference attack and then of the one uh, from the word embeddings themselves by creating them. Um, yeah, but that's that's definitely a direction to take the project. <laughs>